Welcome to another painting tutorial, and this one we're going to look at the Ogre Thunder Tusk. So this is the uh, big creature that comes with the stone horn. Um, you have the option to do one or the other, and this is the second tutorial I've done with this. And uh, so I did the stone horn in the other one, and now I'm showing you the Thunder Tusk. So I did not magnetize these; they're two separate models. Um, I have seen them magnetized, but the problem with that is uh, the fur then ends up being all the same for both of them. And its position on the base kind of uh, messes that up a bit too. Anyways, um, I'm going to walk you through how I did this. did it mostly with Reaper paints and some of uh, GW's old paints. But uh, any paints will do. Uh, you just got to find sort of the right combinations that work for you. So the main difference with this is I used this uh, amber gold triad for the main fur. So it's kind of like a off-white blondish fur uh, on the on the big creature and uh, everything else is the same um, all these same things as the rest of my ogre army so keeping consistent with all my colors and everything starting to fit together nicely so I won't explain those uh, check out my other videos and you'll see but if you pause it here you can take a look and see what the uh, the reaper paints and how the triads work and, um, and yeah I'll talk about that now so uh, what I did is I used my airbrush to base coat this. So in general, using those um, the the amber gold triad, I started with the darkest color and then kind of worked my uh, highlights up on the lighter areas. Tried to give it a bit more of an exaggeration around where these straps would be and uh, and whatnot. So it it worked a little bit. I, I ended up having to go over it again um, on the uh, the golden blonde on all the edges of all the fur. But uh, in general, I got a good uh, quick base coat with the airbrush. So you see the other side. And uh, now uh, what I'm doing here is I'm painting on, I'm actually painting line by line each one of those hairs. So uh, yeah, pretty time consuming. But um, in the end, I liked how it turned out. I used a bit of some ink washes uh, on these uh, worn through bits here of the uh, the mangy fur or whatever it is. Uh, just to give it a bit of a reddish tone. So I think that was uh, Ogren Flesh uh, Wash I used. Uh, now I'm using the um, the Coldstone Gray Triad from Reaper to do these. So I wanted it to be sort of a, a grayish color. Um, it didn't quite turn out as light as maybe as I wanted it, but basically painted it the darkest color, and you'll see as I build that up later. Uh, the other thing I did differently about these is I base coated the flesh on the uh, Ogre's with my airbrush as well. So I base coated these all on dark brown and then I sprayed them with the uh, the rosy shadow um, color and then I uh, kind of did directional spraying from the top with the lighter colors and then gave it an ogre and flesh wash to kind of give it back a, a bit more of a shade. And uh, it didn't turn out maybe quite as nicely as I hoped. I did it pretty quickly but uh, definitely it was very fast. Um, fast way to do it. Okay, so I'm doing base coats on here, so that's the chestnut uh, brown, and uh, these are some of the leather colors here, and you can see here's with the um, so the, this cold stone gray uh, working my way up, so I'm just feathering it on there, well, actually just painting lines with the fine brush and trying to get uh, trying to get that solid edge at the top there. Some of these have very, um, very good uh, texture on it. Other ones were almost blended flat in, so I'm kind of painting the detail on that's not really there. Um, there you can see I've got these, the leather going on here and uh, doing some of those cold stone uh, browns on the hoofs as well. Okay, so uh, keeping working through some of these uh, triads here. So I've got some tin bits uh, up on here, I'm going to give it a sort of um, a patina finish, and any of the areas that are going to be sort of a, a steel are going to be the rusty colors, the same as the rest of my ogres. And uh, actually, I just got some Vallejo pigment, so I might actually switch that over for the rest of my ogres. Uh, I'm going to give those a try out. Might be doing rust with pigments rather than um, this method. But regardless, for these guys, I'm still kind of stippling on the different uh, layers there. I'm going to go right up to a rust brown with the Reaper paint and then giving it kind of a dry brush slash um, 
uh, worn look with uh, GW chainmail. And uh, there we go, working up there. A little bit of gold highlights on that. Um, I decided to do this one here, silver. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's working through all the details. Um, these guys here, I kind of did a uh, just using the edge highlights around there, so kind of painted that on. Doesn't look as great up close, but uh, a little bit further away looks pretty good. And that's all the same leathers on the uh, the feet and any leather bits. Same uh, same with the rest of my ogres, basically. Uh, there's the patina finish. Um, looks better maybe in some other pictures, but uh, with the Reaper paints, they have a really nice uh, color for that. So I just water it down and paint it on. So that was the aqua, surf aqua, I believe it's called. Okay, now I'm adding um, the, the, the metal on there. So I'm trying to be careful how I do that with a brush, trying to get it on the highlights um, and uh, try to get it look somewhat realistic, but uh, whatever. So this is the um, that the blue, it's sort of the, uh, oh, let's see if I can find the color here in front of me. Anyways, it's on the palette um, at the very beginning of this thing here. So I'm painting the, the whole base coat and then uh, the middle tone is everything except for the shadows and the highlight is just the edges. And that's basically the way I do all of my layered stuff. You can see the details coming together on the arrows. I just did all the, the leather colors there. Uh, all this wood is the uh, the wood triad um, shield brown from uh, Reaper. And um, now I'm starting to assemble things. So really the, the time consuming thing for this particular model were the tusks and the fur. Once I'd had those done, it was just dealing with some of these uh, little fiddly detail bits and I wanted to put lots of those on. Um, and you'll see that in a minute. But uh, substantially almost complete here. Um, just got to do some of the details on the face and uh, some of this bone stuff on the uh, the back, the, the I guess the, the saddle type of thing. Um, but what I did want to do is I wanted to fit these in. In general, these fit fairly well. Um, it's actually surprising how nicely all that goes together. Uh, but I had to do a super glue because everything's already painted up. And uh, now onto the base. So for the base, I used um, it's uh, a resin medium uh, with sand already mixed into it. So you get that at the art store. I got mine at Michael's Crafts um, with coupons. And uh, you mix in some paint if you want, or you can paint it after. And I'm just using the mud brown triad from Reaper. So painting it all one color, and it's layers of dry brushing. And then what I did is I glued on tufts of Army Painter uh, Swamp Tufts. And I also did a little bit of the new GW ones, Mordiam Turf and Midland Tufts. And I uh, just kind of mixed those all in together to, to get a bit of variation. Um, I do want to do a review on the different ones, but in general, um, they're all pretty good. Uh, I think, what did I find? I think I found that, that the, uh, the Army Painter ones seem to be a bit longer. Uh, f hair on them, but uh, they they also aren't quite as nice quality. So um, the GW ones they make you buy more at once, but uh, I haven't compared specifically. But I think the um, the volume that you get is about the same uh, if you were to multiply. The Army Painter is a smaller package, but it costs less. Anyways. Um, there's some more of these uh, the details here, and uh, just trying to paint those up quickly to get them ready to glue on. And doing some of the details on the faces here, the red hair that my, all my guys have, sort of the uh, auburn color. It's, it's one of the Reaper triads actually, and it um, goes on quite nicely. And uh, yeah, then I added all these things, glued them on. Some of them I tried to make sure that they were touching in two spots so I could uh, glue them on securely. Oh, and I'll talk about this base as well, because I did a little bit more. So um, I'll show you some pictures of that specifically later. But uh, yeah, this is it done. And um, there's a rule about the uh, sort of a, something to do with frost. I forget exactly what it is. I think it gives the other guys always strike last uh, if they're within six inches. So I, I gave it kind of a frosted look here. But like I said, I'll go into that in a bit more later. 
So, um, yeah, in general, I really, really enjoyed painting this. Um, using the airbrush helps speed up a couple of the steps, but uh, definitely not required. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's lots of fun bits here hanging there. You got the, another crossbow. It's glued, sort of touching two spots. Got this barrel here. Uh, some knives and stuff. Some big tongue there. Yeah, just lots of fun. Lots of character in this model. I'm kind of dreading uh, transporting it because of this thing here sticking out and and these here. They're not actually touching at the bottom there. So a um, little bit uh, weary about how that's going to transport. And of course, all this stuff up here is quite uh, fragile. So a little bit more of a close-up. And uh, yeah, I... Um, can't wait to see this on the tabletop. It's lots of fun. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Leave comments below. Check out my blog. Uh, it's like watching paint dry .blogspot com. And um, yeah, check back for more. Subscribe, like, share. Okay, so what did I do down here? Basically, I wanted to give it a light dusting of snow, looking like it was frost sort of spreading away from the center here. So I taped off the edges of the base, first of all. I sprayed it with a light, maybe generously light uh, coat of matte finish and then I just sprinkled this stuff on uh, until I got the look I was going for and uh, so you can see it's over top of these tufts as well so it kind of looks like there's snow stuck in them like a light dusting of snow and um, I didn't quite like that enough yet so I sprayed it again with the, the matte finish like a matte spray and um, sprinkled a bit more on then I used super glue and glued these guys down, and um, that was it. So the whole thing got a matte finish once I was done. Here's a bit more looking at these uh, details here, and um, there's looking at the face. And yeah, so I actually uh, I think I got the idea from one of the um, heavy metal articles, or I think it was a Forge World Masterclass book. And they, they talk about that. So uh, just use a light sprinkling of the snow over top of um, something sticky uh, that's not going to interfere with the uh, with the model long term. So matte's, matte finish works well with that. And uh, just for some size comparisons and uh, just to see what this all looks like, this is the uh, Stonehorn and Thunder Tusk sort of side by side. And uh, there you can see. So the... the the tones on the skin there are, uh, I did lighter on this guy over here, but uh, I think they still match um, each other, looking like they're from the same army. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, subscribe, like, share, and see you next time.